What is going on guys? Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to another episode of Creating a Legacy with FC United Manchester. I hope you are all well this evening. So, if I am correct, this goes out on New Year's Eve. So, also wishing you all a happy new year. And there will be a video put out um, with us just um, wishing it a bit better. But, um, moving on. So, how have I been doing? Well, under the schedule screen, as you can see, <coughs> not been amazing. But not being dreadful either. Um, okay, so we obviously played Blackburn last game. And I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I've totally forgot when I was coming back. Um, and I've just decided to come back for the Harrogate game. Because, well, we've had a bad slump and this could be a positive game. Um, so we followed up with a 2-0 over um, Redditch in the Cup. Followed up by 2-1 over Welling in the league, which I was happy with. Um, a 3-1 defeat to Chester and a 2-3 away at home to Maidenhead. That prompted a change in formation going back to the 5-5 um, five five tactic. Um, that picked up a 1-0 victory, then 0-0, so two back-to-back -back clean sheets after a very poor run. Delighted with that. But then we got beat away to Barnet. Now, mainly my fault, I went attacking because we were... We were nil nil. We were playing well. I genuinely maybe just got a bit too excited. Um, had a bit too much sugar. But moving on to the conference table, we're still inside the playoffs. We're clinging on. Um, I mean it's so tight. Where we expect? We expected seventeenth. Um, and I know our salary per annum. Something I don't normally go in and show and stuff. Um. I was only just checking this a minute ago because I've just been watching an episode of Second Yellow Cards where he checked his was Wimbledon. Um, we're 14th in terms of salary per annum. I mean, look at this. Alfreton, what are they? Who are they? Uh, actually, I want to check this. I want to check this. Uh, who's the most valuable players they've got? Um, yep, that's not even in the slightest bit in order. Brilliant. Good old football match. 190k for this guy, Ryan Loft. Um, well, he's not even anything special. But, let's get on, let's get back to FC United Manchester. How are things going? Well, first off, information. I'm studying for my Continental Sea Licence. The board have granted me to take it, so unbelievable. To think we started with the lowest um, qualification possible, and we are now going up into the Continentals. Um, fantastic by the board. Um, on to transfers, we've made some signings, and we've released some. So Fabian Brandy's gone to Stockport and Matt has been released. Um, coming into the club, we have brought in Carl Shaw. Now, why did I sign him? He'd played 26 games for um, Oxford City, scoring 16 goals in the league. And I wanted someone who was scoring goals, someone who was um, prolific, and someone who was playing well, not just stats, he was playing well. And um, Carl Shaw dropped into that, so he's come in as our rotation striker. Um, he's on a couple of year deal, which is nice, so we can get value for him. The next person to come in, again, guys, he's playing well. He was getting some assists. He was playing some good football for Dulwich Hamlet in the division below. I think he had 11 assists this season, so I thought, get him in. couple of year deal. Um, he's a good backup, a really good backup to have in at the club. The next guy is somebody who... People who watch Fox in the Box might know. Um, I didn't even put two and two together until just after I signed him and actually messaged um, Fox in the Box just saying, is this the guy you were, um, had a lot of success with? And it is. Um, Billy Waters, obviously he had success with him in his crew series in FM15. Um, he's kind of dotted around the low leagues on this one. Um, and I picked him up from um, Newport County. But check the stats. He's going to be an awesome winger for us. And I've paid 6.75. But here we are. People have asked me to spend money. People have commented saying, why don't you spend a bit? I've done it. Pepe Castano from Burnley. 25k. He comes in as the best player in the club. Oh, he is beautiful. Um, wow. Seriously, what a guy this is. I genuinely think after a few games, let him settle down. I'm going to be excited to see how he does. Um, I really do think we've got a, we've definitely got a League 2 quality here. What does the course say? Good player for most League 2 sides. So, so excited to see how he does. As you'll see, I've got Jack Rodwell back on trial. This is twice now he's been on trial. And I just can't get him to discuss terms. I understand we low down. He's not interested. We don't match his ambition. But I'm just going to keep trying. You never know. At some point he might actually want to discuss it with us. You never know. Um, 
I think that's it to show you guys. Finances, we're still over a million, so I am hoping once we secure safety in the division, we might go professional, which would give us a massive boost in terms of finishing games off with fitness, finishing games off with a chance of winning, because our players are knackered at the end of every game at the minute. Um, sorry, wrong screen. One thing I was trying to do is boost our coaching. I've applied for more coaches. The board have finally said no. They've been generous over the years. Um, we currently have five coaches, which is about right. Maybe one one more than most others. Train facilities are poor. It's something I'm going to actually do next. In fact, I'm going to. I have to wait because if I do it now and they spend say six seven hundred k, there's no chance of going professional. So once we go professional, I will then ask about improving the training facilities. Um, also, you'll see we are looking for a new senior affiliate. I've just asked for that um, on the 10th, so two days ago. So I needed it because Jill and him are offering me just crap. So let's get into it anyway. We've got Harry get at home. We're going with the 4-5-1. Um, actually, you know what? They are bottom. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with this. So we are going with um, Nisic in goal, Mills, Jokev and Castano. So new centre-back partnership there. Beasley, then Reed, Ellison, Sibson, Waters, Williams and Gomez. Was it last episode or not? Where Ellison... It was, it was live on the episode. I'll go back. It's been a few days since I've recorded the episode. I'm sure you guys are noticing. Um, I just wanted to check because as you see, Sibson's tucked away on the left at the minute. And it's genuinely just because of how good um, Ryan Williams is doing. But Simpson's not doing bad, 7.36 out there. So let's just leave him on the left for now. Let's see if um, we can pick up the victory. We're 6 to 4 on. And we're not in the good run of form, but now they're very good. So I'm just going to give us all a bit of a passionate talk there. And let's get into today's game. I know they were playing two very deep centre midfielders, so hopefully that's going to be an advantage for us. You never know. But it's all about reading the opposition, reading what they, how they lining up and saying if we can beat it. I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm not. A, you just know I'm not an expert. I, I, I wouldn't be in season six in the conference premier. But I, I, I think I can read things well. We've surpassed expectation. Have we done amazing each season? No. I think everyone knows that. Mainly due to mainly due to stupid shit like that. I mean, what chance have you got though when your players are cocking up like that? I mean, the exciting thing is now though is um, apart from my fullbacks, I'm genuinely I don't want to swap any of my players. Um, I'm going. To, I'm getting to the point now where the only time I'm going to replace them is when they they reach their level and they're not performing good enough. Um, and I am on a massive spending spree. The main. Let me try to explain the main reason why I brought in four players just now. Um, I'm hoping that in the summer we don't actually have to sign a single person, um, and that going into a new season. Um, would give us a massive boost in terms of the players familiar lab, familiar lab, yeah you know what I mean they're used to each other they're um, ready to play for each other they're ready to they know each other's game um, wow why are we playing so deep when we should be attacking but yeah genuinely think if um, we don't bring any players in in the summer or we only have to add a couple of um, squad players then oh, oh my days Gomez with the equaliser and what a goal yeah I think um, the key to success is obviously having a squad which knows each other who can play with each other who are used to each other so my main aim is to kind of just keep this team together, keep them growing. You've got Sibson, Ellison, Reed, um, the two centre backs. I mean, sorry, Castano's only twenty two, Walters twenty six, Gomez twenty two, Williams is twenty eight. So there's a couple of experience as well as youth who are getting older and older. And um, Ellison's going to be in his twenty twenty one, Williams two one, twenty twenty one next season. You've got um. Reed's going to be 20, Simpson's going to be 20. They're getting older, they're getting more mature. Um, 
The question is what league are we going to be in? If we go up, I think we will need to strengthen. If we don't go up, then I genuinely think this team is good enough next year to take us up as champions. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, guys. I'd love to actually know. Let me know in the comments below. Um, and believe it or not, I've actually been thinking about this for the last couple of days. That's why I might sound like I'm rambling, but the last couple of days I've been thinking, do I need to strengthen for the next of, next season? Or should I go in with the exact same squad? And I've been thinking going with the same squad. Ball over, Gomez. Come on. It's coming back out Ellison though. He lays it off to Williams. Williams spreads it to Mills. Mills ball in, intercepted. But it doesn't look like we're going to pick up the victory. And we have picked up the victory. Get in there, lads. What a comeback that was. Play, went for the attacking tactic. Hit them where it hurts. And we did get the 2-1 victory in the conference. So we are up. They've got game in hand if we see that. And um, Barna will be still a point behind us, so... Yeah, I think at the minute, it is all just about getting in the playoffs now for me. Um, I know the first few years we dropped off and then at the end we didn't, we powered through. Um, but I feel like we need to continue last year's momentum and not, not drop off like we did in previous years. Um, so we're going to come back for... You know what? That's too soon, isn't it? It's only three league games in between. I wanted to come back. You know we'll come back for this. Wrexham away. We're travelling to the race course. We're travelling to one of our local rivals. We're travelling to a team who in real life we take part in a friendly competition each season with. Um, how can FC United Manchester do travelling to the race course? Travelling to Wrexham. Let's find out in the next episode, guys. But thanks for watching and I will see you again.